Can it be, though, talking of the Brexit, that the future of Britain, uh, if not the world, Europe, has been altered irreversibly because of the ongoing competitive rivalry of some posh men? It would seem so. When he was a student, David Cameron put his penis into a dead pig to compete with him as an adult to do something even more obscene and bewildering. Michael Gove put his penis into a Daily Mail journalist. <laughs> Imagine doing that. And to compete with him to do something even more shocking and sickening and weird. To raise a maid, put Boris Johnson into the role of Foreign Secretary. <laughs> Is it just me, or do you ever wake up after a nice sleep and go, Hang on a minute! <laughs> Boris Johnson is the actual, genuine foreign secretary of Britain, a real place. <laughs> that actually exists. It's not a kind of comedy clown mascot foreign secretary who goes around the world being buffoonishly amusing while the real foreign secretary work is done by an unpaid immigrant locked in a bin. <laughs> He's the actual, genuine foreign secretary of Britain, an industrialised nation in the developed world. <laughs> For now, anyway. <laughs> and if you think it's funny that Boris Johnson is foreign secretary, I guarantee you he will be prime minister by Christmas. Theresa May has been put in place by the Tory steering committee as a kind of palate cleanser, a sort of... <laughs> sort of nasty tasting mouthwash that you swirl around your gums before being forced to eat actual human shit. <laughs> a lot of the key players disappeared in the Brexit fallout, didn't they? Uh, Michael Gove and Sarah Vine, they're currently trying to reinvent themselves, aren't they, as the celebrity political couple for young millennials so jaded they no longer find Neil and Christine Hamilton quite sickening enough. <laughs> Michael Gove and Sarah Vine are the Neil and Christine Hamilton for the two girls, one cup generation. <laughs> nice joke there, for everyone laughing. If you, if you don't know what that is, Google it. Not now, though. Now. So, we're living in a post-truth, post-fact era, according to the dictionary last week. Uh, so it's difficult to do anything about politics, politicians and things, because everything is shrouded. You can't do anything about facts because facts don't exist. So you have to just say stupid scatological insults, like the, uh, the fact that I've noticed that Nigel Farage looks like the sort of person who, before masturbating, would put on a pair of driving gloves. <laughs> Ideally, made of calf skin, so that it felt like a calf was doing it. <laughs> but it's interesting. I've been running this stuff in since the summer. I've been in Edinburgh uh, for a month. Last week, I did some tryouts in Cambridge, Bristol. Mainly, Remain voting cities, interestingly enough, and the, the Remain voting cities loom out of the map, don't they? Now, like fantasy. Citadels in a, a Tolkien-esque landscape. <laughs> Wondrous warm cities full of wizards and poets. <laughs> People who could understand data. <laughs> in the middle of a vast swampy wilderness, and here there be trolls with no real <laughs> brain. Hang on a minute, Stu, trolls? No, that's no way to describe the English and Welsh majority that voted to leave Europe. And to be fair, it isn't, right? You can't really, you know, generalise about these things. People voted to leave Europe for all sorts of different reasons, right? And it wasn't just racists that voted to leave Europe. Cunts did as well. <laughs> and that stupid fucking broad cunt. <laughs> Racist and cunts <laughs> and people with legitimate anxieties about ever closer ties to Europe. <laughs> Dear Miss Allen, please inform your client, Stuart Lee, who I had the misfortune of seeing last night, that I voted to leave Europe and I am neither a racist nor a cunt. <laughs> Merely someone with genuine anxieties about ever closer ties to Europe. Yours, a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> what a relief, there's a stony-faced woman in the front row just tipped to that point, so... Uh, <laughs> it wasn't a 
a set cunt. It was I didn't say it enough. You have to persist with these things. So, um, but the people did vote to leave Europe for all sorts of reasons. Again, to be fair, not everyone that voted to leave Europe wanted to see Britain immediately descend into being an unaccountable single party state exploiting people's worst prejudices to maintain power indefinitely. <laughs> Some people just wanted to have bendy bananas, didn't they? 